Well, hello. What I love is not only to make wonderful food in the kitchen, I love to also get my seeds ready for my spring planting in the garden, in the kitchen, wherever you have space. So seed starting is one of those things that for some people seems very mystical or a lot of work, or maybe you've never started seeds or even gardened, and it can just be overwhelming. And the thing is, seed starting is super easy. It is really low cost, but it also opens up a whole world of so many different seeds you can actually start. If you buy seeds in a nursery, that is great. They are wonderful plants, they are well grown. You don't have to worry about it. It takes some of the work out of it. If you're like me and you've been gardening for a while or you wanna try something new and maybe have certain varieties of things that you can't find already started, starting your seeds is the way to do that. You can buy any of the heirloom seeds you wanna buy, which means you know, they're usually kind of think of them as like an antique seed, one that has been around for a long time and has a lot of different varieties as opposed to maybe just the few standard varieties you would find that are ready to buy. So you probably seen a lot of places. I categorize my seeds. I'm sure I saw this somewhere once too, but this is actually to organize your pictures, like actual photo, you know, when people used to actually print photos, that was a thing at one time. Um, and you would put them in here and you can label them instead do it for seeds. I've seen so many different people share about how they do this too, so I know it's around, but seeds. So when do you start seeds? I think that can kind of be the hard thing. You can look on the back of a packet and it gives you a lot of helpful tips if you are new to this. It is always gonna tell you something about your last spring frost date. Just Google what your last frost date is. For me, where I live, zone five in Iowa, which it can change for everyone, Mine is around, I have a 10% or less chance of a frost around like May 12, May 15. Last year we got a frost at that time. 10% or less chance and it happened. So follow the frost dates and then you know. But like on this packet it says, start indoors 68 weeks before your last spring frost date. So then you can kind of work backwards and start kind of knowing when you start certain seeds. So your earliest crops are gonna be your cabbage, your broccoli, cauliflower, because they can take cool temperatures. And you plant them outside when it's still cooler. Things like tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, sweet potatoes hate cool temperatures and cannot be planted out till after that frost date. So here I have a seed starting tray. This is the very traditional one you will find anywhere. It has six pack containers. You can see it's just pretty simple. And underneath the containers is a drip tray that is gonna hold the water so when you water it, it will contain some of the water and you can then water from the bottom up, which is what I like to do with my seeds starting. So I have here pre-moistened soil. And what I did, you want seed starting soil, which means it's gonna be lighter. It does not have fertilizer added into it because fertilizer can actually burn seeds. A seed has everything it needs right in its coating, its shell, all the nutrients it needs to actually sprout and get going is in there. So it does not need anything. You want just a simple lightweight soil. And the reason I pre-moisten it is because it is so lightweight that it takes it a long time to actually be able to soak up all the water. If you just try to put it in here dry, soak it up. Also, if you water it once it's in here, it really condenses and kind of then you have to keep adding soil and water and soil and water. So if you just put it in like a bucket, get it moistened, like you can tell it's still dry, but it's moistened and that's kind of the point because that way it will actually be able to now accept water easier. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it into each cell and you can kind of just lightly pack it just with your fingertips. You're not trying to make it densely packed, but just enough that it's not tons of air pockets in it. Cause air pockets are actually really bad, just like on houseplants for roots. Air pockets are gonna dry out little sections of roots and you don't want that. So you just wanna lightly pack it in and then be able to fill up those cells. So as we're doing that, you can kind of see that they slowly fill up, but we're not overfilling them either. And what I like about on these larger trays, you can kind of just swipe it around where you need it. And don't worry, if this to you looks like, oh my goodness, that is a lot of seeds. <laughs> it is. You can do one six pack, two six packs, whatever works for you in your garden, whether it's a container, one raised bed, multiple raised beds, it doesn't matter. You can make it work for you. And that's what's wonderful about seed starting. However, whatever size you need, it's perfect. So I'm gonna wash my hand and then we're gonna start with the seeds. Now, as you can see, I kind of go overboard and like to try lots of different varieties. And I also overplant in the sense that I'm probably gonna make sure I have at least 
a couple extra plants than what I'm planning on planting at the moment because you never know how the crop's gonna turn out. Will a couple die or outside will one die and you'll want to back up? So it's always good to have some options and give yourself some leeway just for added insurance. So if you're also worried, yes, I do. I save my seeds year to year for a few years and honestly, it can probably be for a few more years than you expect. But every year there is the possibility that it doesn't have as high a germination rate. But in the second year after you buy it, the third year, you're probably gonna be fine. So I'm gonna take about, you can just see how small these seeds are and how they're gonna disappear once we put them on. But I start by just making a little hole kind of in each little cell and just kind of, now if you're worried about how deep, a lot of them again, they tell you quarter inch to half inch deep. So a lot of the guesswork isn't guesswork. You can actually just check on the pack and know what you need to know. That's what's wonderful about it. So you can kind of, you know, guesstimate what a quarter inch would be. And since it gives you that leeway, you don't have to worry so much. So I have little holes there and we're not packing it in again. I'm just gonna take a couple seeds probably per one. So again, this is just a second way to do that added insurance. And you can see as I'm going, look at the cost here. So we're talking a few dollars for some of the packets of seeds. You're getting hundreds of seeds. So don't worry about using a few extra seeds in each one as they sprout, which we'll do a follow-up follow video, we're gonna take out all the extras because we don't want them to crowd out, but we definitely wanna make sure that we have enough. So I save, once you get done, you save your seeds, do not throw these out. You know, this is a great thing if you're new to seed or you're not new to seed starting, whatever it is, share them with friends, get together, buy them together, all use them. So now we're just gonna slightly, with our fingers again, just put that soil back over. So since it's pre-moistened, I was mentioning I like to have it pre-moistened because I don't like to water them directly after over the top. Because if we right now would take, you know, a watering can of water and just start going over the whole thing, you can displace the seeds. It could spill over, those seeds could get pushed off or they could get pushed into another cell. So now that's pre-moistened, we only have to water it from the bottom. It will soak it up through and then we can just use kind of a squirt bottle on top and spray the water on top to make sure they're getting evenly watered. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna keep putting seeds in. I have a few to go. And then we're gonna kind of finish up with a few more tips. I have all my seeds planted and I put the soil back on and I even actually started labeling them all. So I go a little bit type A and I use my little label maker and label the sides because before they get, you know, sprouted, you put a cover here on them and so little sticks, like garden stakes they're labeling, they don't really fit with my cover. So I put it on the side so I can always know for sure which one it is. And then later on, I'll make little like wooden stakes or something for each six pack, just so I know for sure. So on top of the soil, you can see there's something there. And it's vermiculite, which is a natural product that you can buy at almost any garden center because it's a soil amendment. It's really good to put into your raised beds. It helps aerate. But here what we're doing is we're helping so too much moisture doesn't sit on top of the soil. So a lot of times what can happen in seed starting or the one nemesis that I seem to sometimes have is where the soil that the moisture that's trapped inside of these because we're gonna put a cover on it, make it into a greenhouse pretty much. It can get so much moisture that it can kind of cause mildew or mold sometimes on top of the soil. And then as the sprout comes, that can kind of start rotting that sprout off and dampen it off is what it's called. So what the vermiculite here does is create a different surface where the moisture isn't able to quite do the same bad effects that it would otherwise. And it actually works really well. So I just put a nice layer over all of it, not too thick, but just enough to kind of keep that moisture and stave it off and you're ready to go. So I had all the packets around here because I was keeping everything to know where I was putting it and what I was doing. So I'm gonna just take them away here. Obviously then I'm just gonna keep them over there. I just had to know what I was doing while I was doing it. So the Mickey light is all on. At this point, I do like to give it a nice little spritz just with a water bottle. You can see some of the vermiculite will get displaced, but then once you really start moistening it, it's just gonna stay there. This just helps to make sure you have that moisture set in right in the beginning because the moisture now plays an extremely important part. So really what helps anything sprout is some light, warmth, some water, 
And so we just need to give it all those components. So we don't want to overburden it with water. We don't want these to be sitting in water or drowning in water. Instead, we're just giving them a good dose here on top to make sure it's well moistened on top. Because remember that seed's also in, we moisten the soil and then the seed is in the top quarter to half inch of it. Now, the important part is our cover. So this is now creating its greenhouse. So it's trapping in some of the vapors, the warmth, and then the light now, I'm gonna put it under a grow light. Now I have a grow light system that has like three racks. It's large, it has high powered lights. Obviously I do a lot of seed starting. If you're new to it and you're doing a couple packs, you can do them in you know, a windowsill or something. It just, the sun this time of year doesn't have as much strength. And so you're not gonna get as much maybe light out of it. It won't create maybe quite as sturdy of start but if it's what you have, totally go for it and it can work. I remember growing up, my mom did that a lot. She sometimes used grow lights, but she did that way too, and it does work. So I'm gonna put these under grow lights. I'm gonna put the grow lights down close to it. Once they sprout, and they can have this removed then, because then you're gonna trap in too much moisture once they're all sprouted. So when they're sprouted, we're gonna remove this. The light will go down close to them so it can really absorb all the nutrients it needs from the light and they'll go. So we're gonna do a follow-up video because right now, this doesn't look like too much fun, does it? But we are gonna do a follow-up so you can see what you do after they sprout, how you treat them, do you fertilize them? What do you do for water? How do you care for them? But at this point, you put the cover on, make sure you see moisture condensing on it under the light. If not, every day give it a nice spritz, but if moisture's condensing, you're good to go. And then we'll do more because this is the fun part. Seed starting should not be hard. It should not be difficult. It should be fun, exciting because you are taking something that is hard and little, a little seed, and you were gonna bring it to life and then eventually plant it. I'm pointing to my garden. You can't see it because it's under snow. And then you're gonna harvest it. And then we can bring it in the kitchen and can with it, cook with it, whatever it is. This is so fun and this is the exciting part of gardening. So I hope you're invigorated. I hope you're excited, inspired. As always, I hope you share these videos around because not only do I want you to do this, I want everyone to do this. Your friends, your neighbors, because if I can do it, you can do it. We can all do it. We can plant a garden, see some life, enjoy something new, try something out. That's the point. Check my wide, check what? No, my website, which is wiseguide.com for this information, for tips and tricks and how to's for garden starting, for recipes, whatever it is, it's on my website, wiseguide.com everything you need to know. I'm gonna put these under light. We're gonna have life going in the house and it is gonna be a good spring.